training. The act or process by means of drill, practice, etc. of becoming proficient in some art. Our leader development system is, goes back to about 1989 when General Sullivan, the former Chief of Staff of the Army and then Deputy Commandant of the Command of General Staff College, uh, where he conducted a leader development study in the United States Army. And we've been working with that leader development system and program since 1989. Our Army has transformed several times over since then, and we're in the middle of a major transformation now. So it is uh, appropriate for us to go back and review our leader development system and to find out how we can put that leader development system in harmony with our training system in the United States Army. Training and leader development complementary imperatives, programs in the United States Four. Army that must go together. Uh, you could potentially As part of its effort to rapidly proceed with the transformation process and assure early mission readiness, the Army has developed a comprehensive training program to infuse the necessary skills, knowledge, and attributes within the future leaders of the emerging force. Leader training has been developed and conducted concurrently at Fort Leavenworth and with the stand-up of the initial brigade combat team. This represents a breakthrough from the past, where training has traditionally lagged behind the introduction of new equipment or doctrine and the stand-up of new units. Leaders, officers and NCOs, and soldiers, because they're potential leaders, must have a wider set of experience and a deeper set of experiences. So the leader development program for the transformed forces must answer this need. How do you increase the breadth and depth of leader experience? How do you alter the role of soldiers from followers to potential leaders so that we can act decentralized, we can act dispersed, we can be full spectrum, and we can act faster than the enemy? The transformation leader training began in the early spring of 2000 and has concentrated on three specific areas. A tactical leaders course, TLC, and a senior leader course for small unit and major unit leaders of transformation formations, and an elective course, known as Alpha 311, for future leaders at the Command and General Staff College. The tactical leaders course was developed by the TRADOC schools and field validated at Fort Lewis. This course concentrates on training leaders at battalion level and below. The course focuses on how transformation units are likely to be organized and how they'll fight differently from today's units. Inherent in the course is the infusion of the leadership characteristics in the junior tactical leaders that will allow emerging units as a whole to perform in accordance with the new O&O concepts and doctrine. I thought that the tactical leaders training that we received uh, for E7s and above was particularly effective because with any new organization, uh, you have got to uh, make sure that the, that the junior leaders, the E7s and the platoon leaders, understand you know, what that organization is supposed to look like, how that organization is supposed to fight. Early on, in anticipation of the need to institutionalize instruction on the transformation, the Command and General Staff College designed an elective course of instruction, known as Alpha 311, for implementation during the CGSC school year of 99-2000. The course has three main goals. First is to present instruction on the unique aspects of emerging transformation forces. Second is to use the O&O concept as a venue to continue the adaptive thinking training begun during Army Experiment 6. And finally, to use the course's computer-driven final simulation exercise as a training ground for them to plan and execute operations in accordance with the transformation O&O concept and new doctrine. That class was very beneficial. It gave me a very good idea prior to getting to the brigade on how CSS was going to be integrated into the combat functions. In order to quickly bring the senior leadership of transformation forces up to speed on the operational, organizational, and new doctrinal concepts for fighting it, TRADOC developed a five-week training course known as the Senior Leaders Course, or SLC. It's targeted at brigade level at present. Attendees include the brigade commander and staff and subordinate commanders and staffs down to battalion level. Secondary objectives of the SLC are to quickly bond the commanders and staffs into effective teams 
and to permit them the opportunity to begin the development of tactics, techniques, and procedures peculiar to their unit. What we have done here at Fort Lewis with uh, the brigade cell out of Tradoc and the uh, ATIC cell and the I Corps commander uh, uh, in input is create a model that the Tradoc community can look to and assess and develop the right set of, of training methodologies for the rest of the interim force and the objective force. Along with the current initiatives that are in place, TRADOC is developing future programs and adapting others that will be fundamental in the transformation process of today's Army. The current institutional training system, uh, specific, specifically for officers and non-commissioned officers and our warrant officers, is a very effective education system for each of those three cohorts within the United States Army. And as our Army transforms, it's obvious that we must go back and adapt this very good system to make it even better and more appropriate for the transforming Army and our objective force. A one-site officer basic combat training program is being pilot tested at the infantry school. Officers will progress through a series of institutional training courses across the career span with challenging operations assignments. Small group leaders and experienced mentors will assist in building leadership skills. Training experiences will capitalize on live and virtual combat training center links and introduce joint and interagency experiences earlier in the career progression. The warrant officer education system will continue to produce the Army's technical experts. Enhancements will emphasize technical competencies to support the ever-increasing technical and complex array of equipment. Reachback capabilities within the training system will link warrant officers in the field with schools for the latest technical updates and embedded digital skills training at each level of education. Non-commissioned officer leader development system enhancements include technical, tactical, and leadership skills that progressively build from a branch focus to a battlefield functional area focus. Future Army operations will become more joint, more combined arms, and more combined in terms of multinational assets. Accordingly, future training will place additional focus on these joint operations. We're going to attempt to move our joint professional military education phases one and two into the command and general staff college experience. Right now we've got that as our joint professional military education phase one, JPME one. We need to move to JPME two so that an officer has a to the totality of his joint professional military education when he comes out of the experience uh, of uh, the intermediate level education process or what we call today comm uh, Command and General Staff Officers course. Training will focus on infusing the knowledge among our leaders of how to operate a combined task force, not only in a joint environment, but also in a combined environment earlier in their careers. Finally, combat training centers will continue to play an integral role in the developing of our leaders for the future force. Combat training centers in the United States Army are the crown jewels of our training program. We look at them as a training program in the United States Army and our units look at those combat training centers as their capstone training event for their training programs in the Army. Those programs will, will remain through transformation the cornerstone of our training program but they need to be changed. Uh, again, they are constructs of the Cold War Army, stood up in the Cold War Army and our Army of Excellence to train our units to fight against the Soviet Union. As that Soviet Union and that threat has gone away and the world has changed around us, we have to adapt the combat training centers to show us what this new operating environment is like and to train our units and our leaders in that new operating environment. Looking forward to the possibilities of tomorrow's conflicts well, shows us that our forces need to be better prepared and ready to handle new and increasingly difficult situations. The main step in the transformation of today's Army is with the increase in the intensity and proficiency of the training of the Army. The Army's transformed forces will be a force that is versatile and agile as conditions demand while remaining decisive. The Army is changing and evolving to meet the needs of our nation.